Welcome guys. Alina is my guest in today's Scythench talk and uh, she's a graduate engineer now working on the longest viaduct in UK, Cone Valley Viaduct. And uh, she's one of the engineers working uh, with me. And uh, yeah, she got a great story to tell, so let's go. Hi Alina, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, great, how are you? Yeah, very happy to have you here. And uh, yeah, the first question gonna be how you actually started in construction? Yeah, so I, my father is a civil engineer, so I was so intrigued by civil engineering and that's the main reason why I chose to do a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. I did my bachelor's degree in civil engineering from India. Uh, it was a four-year course and then later on, I went on to do a master's degree back from India, which was in ocean technology. And I worked in India for three years okay. uh, in a coastal uh, research center. Then I decided that I want to move to the UK uh, to do a master's in civil engineering. And then I moved to the UK uh, to do an MSc in civil engineering with industrial practice at the University of Greenwich, uh, which is a two-year course. And uh, the first year is based in university and the second year you go to an industry, you work with a construction company and that's how you complete your master's degree. So uh, that's my initial stepping into construction, like taking the degree. And uh, then how I landed in a job with Plainbridge is that um, we had this GRE hack, which is like a challenge, uh, which is conducted by the University of Greenwich, where companies come to uh, uh, the university. When Clenbridge came to the university, uh, they gave us a challenge and our team uh, came, as, uh, came in the first place. So uh, I was offered as a prize, I was offered a 15 day internship. Uh, at one of their sites, uh, which is the BBC Sadler's Well site, uh, which is in Stratford in London. So I spent 15 days uh, with the company and I really like the company culture and the way they work and everything. So I was very keen to join with the company during my industrial placement year as well. And then, um, uh, I sent out the CV and they interviewed me and then they were ready to offer me the industrial placement year. So I joined with Clenbridge at the Cone Valley Viaduct and it, it was really great here. That's really great story. I hope my daughter is going to say something like this in the future. But uh, I know Alina, you are now on the graduate scheme and uh, I, I think the people are actually would like to know a little bit about this. If you can say a few words, how it looks. Yes. So after completing my university, uh, Clinbridge offered me the graduate role. So the graduate scheme is for three years where um, it is partly site-based as well as office-based where you learn everything that's uh, necessary to run a project. So where during the first year you will be uh, placed in a site where you learn setting out, you learn more about quality and you just have an idea of what all are going on site. You experience the site and you learn that for a year. And then you move on to the head office where you learn about the commercial side of it. You have uh, got the planning, uh, the commercial, the contractual uh, learnings and all those things you do during your second year. And then third year, after learning all these things, you come back to site and apply all these things to site. And the advantage of this graduate scheme at Glenbridge is that once you complete three years in the graduate scheme, then you go directly to become a senior engineer so that, you know, after three years, you don't go back as a site engineer. You go straight away to become a senior engineer which I think is really great. And during those three years, uh, you register with a professional body that is uh, for Glenbridge, they encourage you to be chartered. Um, so um, with the IC, so you can become a chartered engineer uh, with IC. So they train you, they mentor you, 
they help you with they guide you with uh, how to prepare reports and how to sign up attributes for the IC graduate scheme they pay the entire professional fees okay. for these graduate schemes as well that's a really good news and i think yeah i think myself that that graduate program is really great as well especially yeah. if you think actually after a few years you're actually becoming senior engineer you probably know more as well after all this so like like you said you spend some time in, in planning pre-construction then on site and then uh, i think you, after this you're going to know more than me to be honest about some things in construction because obviously i'm side 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 but uh, yeah when we're talking about site maybe you could say a little bit uh, how your day in the life looking like day to day on site yeah sure uh, the site starts uh, basically at seven o'clock it is uh, from monday to friday so it starts at seven o'clock with an engineering briefing where you are told about uh, what all activities are going on sites, what all tasks you have to do. And, um, you know, the, uh, the engineer assigns you with the tasks that you have to do on that particular day. And then after the briefing, you go back, um, you prepare yourself, you get your instruments and you get your report, you raise your inspections with your uh, contractor or your client then you go to site to check on the works that was done or you go to site to brief the supervisor on what has to be done and you describe on what all expecting from them so that's how it looks like and the day is filled with a lot of um, challenges it, it isn't easy so you have to raise inspections uh, at that time you have got like a challenge you you have to solve something then you have to come back you have to do some setting out or you have to check the quality so there are a lot of things that's going on on site and you should have a clear knowledge about uh, the things that you are expecting from the site or you should know what the client is expecting as well and in the evening you prepare reports uh, with photos and everything about what all happened inside how much resources you used how much laborers were there uh were they working safely and then you know were they using what all equipments or uh the mutes that they were using uh, to work on site everything you recorded you prepare your document and send it out and that's how a day looks like for a civil engineer yeah i know it's very very busy for you and uh yeah it's not only setting out uh, i actually think you didn't enjoy setting out too much but then um, uh, anyway that's the that's the thing i think you can actually say a little bit uh, about what you like about construction and what you don't like really about construction and just uh, yeah maybe coming back to what you said uh, guys, that's going to be actually the, the challenges, like everyday challenges. So this is actually good about being a civil engineer, that you're going to be solving problems on a daily basis. But uh, as Alina said, that's uh, Monday to Friday, 10 hours a day and uh, busy, busy, busy. It's not, e not really easy life, so be ready for it. But yeah, if, if you maybe just say a few words about what, what you really enjoyed and uh, what you don't like maybe about construction. So the one thing that I really enjoyed is that uh, I enjoyed quality a lot. Uh, so I love quality and uh, people actually have this misconception that every day in quality looks the same. No, it doesn't. It has got a lot of challenges which we have to solve where you have to conduct a lot of uh, meetings with your client and then you have to come in a middle ground and decide what has to be done on site. So those things are like really key. And then those challenges, I love solving challenges because, uh, you know, you put out the solutions that you have in your mind and then you discuss it with your clients. So those things, I just really love those. The one thing that I hate the most is uh, basically the weather in the UK during November, December which is really cold and then you have to go on site at like you know 7 30 or 8 and it's freezing cold and then yeah. you know everything is like frozen from your mind to your body and everything and you have to just you know 
there are a lot of uh, safety challenges as well which comes with the cold weather so solving that and then there will be delays with work especially as you know so many of our repair material cannot be applied below a temperature so those things are like uh, a lot challenging where you have to give back the particular area back to the client but then you are constrained by the weather in the uk which you know you have no control on and yeah. that's that's something that i i just really you know hate uh, about uh, this yeah i know exactly yeah this is this is very challenging not only guys uh, like challenges every day but also relationship with the client challenge for engineers actually working that five days a week in if it's going to be raining very cold it's not that easy as well if you think about the, the working hours and uh, plus the challenges and like you say we got extra challenges because of the quality because of the products we can use we cannot use and uh, the program which is chasing us every day so yeah but at the end of the day it's quite satisfying anyway i think alina yeah for you as well yes it is it is very satisfying yeah so i think yeah that'll be that'll be like a plus but uh, yeah i think if, if you could maybe say something for people maybe starting in construction or thinking about to start in construction and maybe to give them some advice uh, yeah sure so everyone during their uni days uh, they think that le let me just complete my degree and then start searching for a job which is like uh, not the thing that I would suggest anyone. You should start looking uh, at the company that you want to get into uh, while you are at uni itself. You have to research about the company. You have to get, you know, idea about it. Ask them if you could come for like 15 days, um, you know, to the company to experience how, how the construction world is. So those things really matter a lot uh, because that will help you to give a lot of insight into how a company works and how construction in the UK works, especially for international students. And um, always take up a challenge. Don't feel shy to ask for help. That's something that I was really shy because, yeah, I was so shy to ask for help. I just couldn't open up about what I needed because I was so scared that I might uh, be considered as incapable of uh, completing a task. But then um, everyone knows that you are out from uni and you are just, you know, starting your first job, and then no one is expecting you to just be uh, be the perfect person. But then uh, I think like. Uh, once you ask for help you get the help once you get properly trained there is no stopping as you know greg uh, my my inspections are at 100 percentage pass during during previous months which is like a big uh, thing where i raised nearly inspections every single day and every single inspection is like passed so that really shows like you know if you're trained really well the company is benefiting so like you know you are growing as a person never ever shy away from asking help that would be my one advice i think to be honest this is a very good advice so i know alina you are very very interested in everything you do your inspection perfectly i know that and to be honest i wish most more engineers going to be like you but uh, yeah just just keep doing what you're doing and that's great as, as i said it's a very good advice just keep that curiosity but don't be shy to ask questions yeah it's it shows actually people that you're interested in construction it doesn't show that you you don't know something that's that that's the way you do. obviously you don't know because you're starting so that's the way it goes so yeah, it might be more difficult for me maybe to ask the question, but <laughs> as I may be expected to know everything, but yeah, for you guys, if you start in, keep asking, keep that curiosity, don't be shy. I think Alina, yeah, that would be all. I very thank you for having you here and uh, I hope you're going to come back in some time uh, when you're going to get a little bit more experience, when we're going to finish the project and probably we're going to go on another one. But uh, yeah, thank you again. Thank and, you, Greg. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, as I said, see you. See you on the next one.